Okay, hello, um, fabric book swappers. Um, I think I've figured it out. So, now, this is um, the 4x12 piece of material, which is folded in half. Um, so I've ironed it, which I'm, I'm actually using, um, I think it's a, an old sheet or an old curtain or something, it's, it's cotton. Um, so I've folded in back, yeah, folded in half to make it four by six. Where are we? Da -da 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 -da. Four by six. Um, and yeah, I ironed it, which is probably a good idea when you're going to be, I don't know, you know, decorating it. So I think originally I thought we would stitch the pages together through the middle. But now, um, hopefully no one else has started, but anyhow, we'll figure that out. Um, now I think it's going to be easier because um, easier to s leave a slight spine so that's going to be three eighths of an inch there um, so leave that as a spine so that each um, page is um, so th if this is going to be the Africa page, then it's all together. Otherwise, it's going to be, you know, a page there, a page there, and then these will be at the back of the book or, you know, wherever it goes if, if it joins together the other way. Um, so what I've done here is now... I can do this. Um, so what I've done is measure three eighths of an inch. Oh, God. So I've measured three eighths. Where are we? Measured in three eighths of an inch. Uh, I'm just trying to think which is the best way to show this. Oh, it's got to be that way. Um, I've got enough room here, but anyway. So, measure in from any either edge, top edge or bottom edge, three-eighths of an inch. And that will be your spine. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to try and figure out how to fit this in the camera. Okay, so then line up your marks, your three eighths of an inch marks. The first one I drew a line, which, uh, you know, can either do that or not. If you haven't got one of these sort of rulers, um, you probably need to draw a line. And then, oh, come down here. Then, cheapest. <laughs> bear with me. Mark off. Now I used an awl, which if you haven't got that, you could maybe just use like a darning needle or something like that to measure your holes at every half inch. So maybe Faye can do a diagram <laughs> for this, but anyhow. You can refer back to the video, I guess. So, yeah, so we're in three-eighths of an inch and we're measuring off every half inch to make a hole, so which I did with the awl just to make it easier to stitch through. Um, yeah, so, or I guess if you've got a really sharp needle, you probably, you might be okay. Or we do it with a, a sewing machine. Oh. Yeah, I think you could do it with a sewing machine. I'm just doing it by hand, so 
you could probably do it with a sewing machine, just just like a seam, a three eighths of an inch seam. So what I did was stitch through, use black there just so it can show up. So just started on the top one from the back. Oops, where are we? That hole didn't, oh yeah, that's gone through. So I just started on the top one. Oh, I'm out of thread now. Uh, probably a fairly strong thread is a good idea but if it's by machine well you've got the double row so I just started at the top in and out in and out all the way down and then come back so on the way back you're filling in the gaps and just tie it together at the back where you've left your tail um, and I think, but I'm not 100% certain at this stage, but once they're all done, um, I, I'm thinking that we can join them together, like through, like a, with the top, sort of like a top stitch or a, I'll have a go at that later anyway, I've just run out of time today, but just to kind of... Um, join each page together unless somebody else has got a better idea you know just like a I don't know whether you call it a top stitch or a slip stitch through each one and then just add you know add each one on um, so I hope that explains it but if there's any more questions that's okay we shall get there in the long run. And I'm thinking five is enough. I've I cut out six, but I think five's probably going to be enough. And that will mean that the book's finished before Christmas anyhow. Um, I also did, or am in the process of doing, a, um, an image transfer onto fabric. Uh, I think it needs to dry a little bit more. Uh, I'll see if I can just get the heat gun and dry it, just so you can see how that works. So I just printed these out on a an inkjet printer, um, and the size was a bit strange, so I've cut it up, which I can use throughout the book if, if it works. Um, okay, so I have... Um, I used this heavy gloss, oh gee the light's not very good, heavy gel gloss, um, but any, I think any sort of um, gel medium will work for this, but it needs to be sort of like the thick, thick gel type one, not the thin, uh, the thin one. And so I've coated the material and adhered the, the image face down. So you need a, um, a fairly generous um, layer of the gel on the uh, material. And it's sort of, a, with material, it's a good idea to have something underneath like a page divider or, you know, a non-stick something non-stick because the, the gel will come through the uh, the material although it didn't so much with this it's, it's fairly thick cotton then once it's dry which some people say to leave it overnight but anyway we'll just see what happens when it's dry you get a um, a damp cloth to remove the paper and we'll see how we go. I don't know whether this is wet enough. Looks like it's going to work. I'm hoping. So uh, it's maybe not quite wet enough. I just didn't want to have it too wet. So oh, this table's rattling around here. It's not quite wet enough really. And then you remove the paper 
which is a bit of a tedious process, but um, it's worth it, I think, anyhow. Okay. And, you, you know, I haven't done any of these for a while, but you do sort of get a bit of a neck when you do a few. Um, as you sort of, uh, like, you can end up rubbing the image off <laughs> if you're not careful. But that's coming off quite well. I think it does, um, if it's too wet, you're more likely to rub the image away. And if there's any text or if you particularly want an image to um, be facing a certain way, then you need it to, you sometimes need to do a mirror image or a reverse, reverse the printing on your, you know, your printer or whatever. Um, like this one. Or like the elephant here, once I put it down, he'll be facing the other way. I think you can see that. But if I had a reversed the print uh, before I printed it, then he'd be facing that way. So that doesn't matter too much with this one. And so I kind of think, well, the, the giraffe's looking into the book. That's if I oh yes if I have brushed a bit of the bit of the image away there because I wasn't concentrating. Um, whoops. A little bit more there. So yeah, you need to be fairly light-handed, especially when um, you're getting to this stage where there's. Only a few little bits left, but I can put colour that in there to cover that. And um, you can put a layer of gel over the top once you've got it all off, and that will kind. Ooh, it's coming up a bit. Um, that will. Um, make the, the colours come to life a bit more too. Um, but this image was um, I got off the internet from a fabric shop and so it was a it is a fabric um, but anyway like whatever takes your fancy Oops, let me see, get that, oh, I've already got, <laughs> I'm trying to rub that away there and it's already off. Oh, that's better. Yeah, even just a, a bit of a wipe over with the, and that really wasn't, um, probably really should have dried a little bit more. But anyhow, there we go. So that's worked quite well. Oops, I don't know what I've got on there. Oh, I'll probably, I don't know, something on there. Um, I won't put any gel on it at the moment. I'll let it dry. Okay, so it's worked. There is another image um, transfer method that works <laughs> easier than that, which I'll show later. Yeah, so there we go. That's, um, that's my idea for the book. And yeah, I hope, um, I hope that explains it a little bit better. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.